This is Rogers TV. Welcome to Money Matters with Shannon Jackson, the personal finance show focused on moving you forward financially. It is the month of March, and that means Fraud Prevention Month here in Canada. And this year's theme is 20 years of fighting fraud from then to now. And the focus is to help Canadians realize how fraud has evolved over the years, because it certainly has, from telemarketing and mail to social media and now artificial intelligence. And so how do you protect yourself? And why is it so important to report when you have become a victim of fraud? And so joining me to talk about that today, we have Jeff Horncastle, Client and Communications Outreach Officer at the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre. Jeff, thank you for being here and welcome back. Thanks, Shannon. Before we get into our discussion, can you just share with us a little bit more about the Anti-Fraud Centre? Yeah, so the, the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre is the uh, central repository for fraud in Canada. Um, there are a few different parts that are mandated. So first of all, we collect information reports from, from Canadians related to fraud. Um, and based on the information we collect, we share that with Canadians in order to protect themselves, educate them um, through prevention initiatives uh, like Fraud Prevention Month. And uh, we also work with uh, law enforcement uh, partners and government agencies in Canada, but also across the world. So, um, so much value in reporting to the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre. We're able to link information and share that information with uh, law enforcement uh, internationally. And that's certainly an important position now, uh, really more than ever, because as we mentioned, this year marks the 20th year of fighting fraud. And of course, it's changed over the years. Can you talk about um, how these frauds have changed? Because I think it really speaks to the expertise of these scammers that are taking advantage of us. Yeah, so I mean, overall, um, and generally fraud is technology driven. So obviously over the last 20 years, um, you know, new technology has emerged uh, so much that, uh, you know, sometimes we forget what it was like 20 years ago, right? So anything from caller ID spoofing is new technology that that's emerged. Um, the social media, brand new environment for, for fraudsters to target potential victims. Um, you know, you touch on artificial intelligence, which is just kind of starting to emerge. Um yeah, so there, there's so many different ways, and that's what we want to really focus on this year and just show how fraud has changed. So, you know, it, it's not necessarily all boiler room fraud like it was, or telemarketing fraud like it was 20 years ago. It, it's really evolved in, into different ways and different solicitation methods. And so for those of our viewers that are wondering about the significance of raising awareness and offering advice on fraud prevention. I just want to share some statistics uh, about fraud here in Canada, and these are pretty alarming numbers. And so at the end of December 31st, 2023, there were 62,365 reports of fraud. There were 41,111 victims of fraud here in Canada. And all of that totaled a loss of $554 million, which is actually more than a $20 million increase from the year before. And so, Jeff, when I was looking at these stats and comparing them over the past few years, I noticed that there was a decrease in the incidents of fraud that were reported, as well as a decrease in the victims, but the amount of money that was lost continues to rise. So can you speak about those differences? Yeah, so great question. There's a few different factors that come into play here. First of all, um, fraud is so underreported. We estimate that only 5 to 10% of victims report, right? So this is only a small sample, unfortunately, of what's occurring in, in Canada. Um, you know, a lot of reports are so much more sophisticated than they have been in the past. So when we're looking at crypto investments, 
you know, a lot of um, high dollar loss compared to to what it was in the past. So those are a few, a couple of the factors. Obviously, a few, you know, there there are more factors, but those are the main ones. And so during this Fraud Prevention Month in March, the Canadian Anti Fraud Centre is focusing on emphasizing the importance of reporting the fraud because just like you said reports are really five to ten percent of the actual fraud that is happening uh, across the country we also want to raise that awareness and provide tips to help people protect themselves so i understand that during this month you are breaking the month into weekly themes can you talk more about that yeah for sure so uh yeah week one um i mean or overall like we mentioned it's we're going to be highlighting how fraud has evolved, right? So we're going to break that down into sub themes. So week one would be evolution of the fraud pitch. So, which means evolution of different types of fraud. So when we're looking at investment fraud, for example, um, 20 years ago, you may have gotten a call offering like a precious gem to, to purchase a pre precious gem. And then you can make a, a huge return on, on this, this jewel or gem, right? Now this has evolved into crypto investment scams, um, phishing. Is another example where you know 20 years ago we did receive the odd phishing message but now we're, we're getting so many due to automation artificial intelligence um very legitimate looking so technology has played a huge factor in in that um the week two solicitation methods so um social media brand new environment for for fraudsters to target potential victims again they're, they're using artificial intelligence with bots um, you know, phone remains, uh, you know, one of the top solicitation methods, but they're also, fraudsters are also using technology at their disposable, uh, disposal to, um, to fraud uh, Canadians, right? So those are a couple of solicitation methods. Um, week number three, how fraudsters want you to send money. So specifically, you know, we hear a lot of both Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, um, very, one of the main payment methods that fraudsters are now uh, asking victims to to send money by, and uh, week number four, new technology to watch for. Of course, artificial intelligence. Uh, we're looking at QR code fraud, where you might get a message asking you to scan a QR code, and um, yeah. So we want to highlight, you know, what's important, what's changed, and what's coming. Well, I want to get into that new technology part a little bit, and and talk about AI because I think. That's starting to be top of mind for Canadians. Their RBC did their annual Fraud Prevention Month poll, and 75% of Canadians are more concerned about fraud than ever before. About 88% also believe that the use of AI will increase scam attempts over the next year and make everyone more vulnerable to fraud. And four out of five Canadians believe that AI will make fraud attempts by phone harder to detect and they're concerned about voice cloning and those impersonation scams. And so we know that from the news, there are more and more incidents of fraud that are involving AI. And the same survey says that 56% of people observed a noticeable increase in scams or fraudsters who are using AI to create that realistic fake video or those audio recordings. And 47% have reported a rise in those voice cloning scams where you think you're talking to somebody that you know and trust, and that's how they deceive you. So these advancements in these techniques, they certainly signify an era of challenges that are going to be coming with cybersecurity and fraud prevention. So Jeff, what's your advice on how someone can protect themselves against specifically these AI scams? There, there are so many ways that AI can, can be used in, in different types of scams. Um, so first of all, when we're looking at uh, generative AI, where you know fraudsters are, are able to craft emails and uh, they may not have spelling mistakes in them like they have in the past, they just have to ask their, their program to you know write out a, an email. Um, so if they're in another country, lingua, English isn't their first language, it, it's not, a, not an issue any longer. One example, of course, now you mentioned deep fake videos. So if you see a celebrity or a news anchor promoting a cryptocurrency uh, platform, not necessarily real, right? Um, or the same thing with merchandise. So, you know, you see a celebrity promoting a, a, a merchandise, a, a fraudulent website. 
it's so important to know what technology is is out there. Um, you know, of course, you don't have to be an expert on it, but just being aware that some of this stuff exists can really go a long way. And of course, you would follow the same steps that you normally would, um, depending on the type of, of fraud that, that's occurring. So, of course, AI is is at the forefront of scams. Uh, or forms of fraud that people are concerned about. And the research is showing that other types of fraud do continue to impact the financial well-being of Canadians. So I want to sort of get into those now. What are some of the other common frauds that have been reported over the last year? Yeah, so uh, I mean, we um, at the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre, we document over 30 different types of fraud. So it becomes kind of a, you know, a lot to remember. Um, I, I want to uh, stress the importance of, you know, knowing what tools fraudsters are using, what tactics they're using, what methods, what technology they're, they're using. With that being said, um, identity fraud remains the top reported type of fraud at the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre and has been for a number of years. Um, so if you have been a victim of identity theft in the past, which means that, you know, you've been notified that you were part of a, a data breach or, you know, you, you provided personal information through a phishing message, then you're a victim of identity theft. What you want to do is protect yourself from being a victim of identity fraud. Um, various steps to follow. They're all listed on the, the antifraudcenter.ca website. And, um, so important because I mean identity fraud can become a, a huge headache right where you're making phone calls every day so there's ways to prevent that from happening uh moving down the list service fraud um has evolved over the last 20 years so we're we're seeing you know we're still seeing a lot of um tech support scams uh for example is one variation where fraudsters might claim to be um one of your service providers they need remote access to your, to your device another variation might be a phone call claiming to be your cell phone service provider asking for personal information for what they say is a credit verification um personal information again this is very closely linked to identity theft so this is, could be a phone call or an email specifically looking for for personal information they might be claiming to be you know a government agency the cra or service canada um and of course phishing is at the top of that list as well uh largely due to to automation now with uh, messages so many messages going out now whether they're claiming to be your financial institution uh a government agency um important thing with this is you know avoid clicking on links before you're you're able to verify with the sender uh normally by telephone if you have to look up the legitimate phone number for the company or agency in, in question and uh, always verify before putting your your device at risk or putting your identity at risk and i think too that the those investment scams i think where that's where those cryptocurrency scams maybe come in because it seems like those are really the the ones that rob people out of the most money, which is unfortunate because it's it preys on our, you know, our desire to be able to have some money in our pocket. Um, but when we don't know enough about these products and these things that are coming out, I think it makes it really challenging for Canadians and unfortunately makes us victims as well when we don't know that information. So when we hear about the statistics regarding these incidences and the costs associated with them, there's no doubt, of course, that techne technology has made fraud much easier to commit. It's more widespread and it's more sophisticated than ever before. And we're going to be talking about that. We're also going to talk about why these fraudsters are so successful. But most importantly, Jeff is going to share some advice with you on how you can protect yourself moving forward when Money Matters returns after the break. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Everybody knows not to drink and drive, but some people still think it's okay to take drugs and drive. Police have the authority, the ability, and the tools to determine if drivers are impaired by legal or illegal drugs. And because drug-impaired drivers can pose just as great a risk as drunk drivers, they face the same penalties, like the loss of their driver's license, a criminal record, fines, and more. A message from the RCMP, the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police, and Arrive Alive Drive Sober. 
You're watching an interesting local show on Rogers TV and you want to know more. That's when you head to rogerstv.com. Our website provides more information about our programs, our hosts, our schedule, and about how you too can get involved with Rogers TV. Visit us online at rogerstv.com. Welcome back to Money Matters with Shannon Jackson. My guest today is Jeff Horncastle, Acting Client and Communications Outreach Officer at the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre. And it is March, and it means Fraud Prevention Month here in Canada, and that's what we're talking about today. Before the break, we talked about the statistics pertaining to fraud in Canada, and they are shocking, as they have been over the last few years. And we also discussed the top frauds and scams that are costing Canadians millions of dollars. And technology, of course, has certainly made these frauds and scams easier to, to commit, much more I'm sorry, sophisticated than what they used to be. So according to surveys, the majority of Canadians, about 57% admit to seeing an increase in the scam attempts, and about 76% express a concern about them. About 82% believe these scams will increase as people deal with economic challenges, and about 53% say they're being targeted by fraudsters more than ever through social media. And so with all of this awareness, Jeff, why are fraudsters still so successful in deceiving us and taking our money? That's a great question, Shannon. And there's, you know, like I like I mentioned, there there's so many different types of fraud that we we document. Um, with that being said, there there are common techniques or, or ways that uh, the fraudsters are fooling. So unfortunately, um, the frauds and and are run by professional criminals, experts who know what they're doing. In other words, right? Um, they they rely on basic techniques to be successful, which include uh, professional looking ma marketing materials. So, whether that's uh, you know an email or an ad you're seeing online or on social media, um, providing believable answers for your tough questions. So they may have some of your personal information before they they place that phone call. Um, commonly impersonating government agencies, legitimate businesses, websites, charities. So in general, places that we, we trust. So, you know, naturally that, you know, if we're getting a call from claiming to be from the government, then, you know, we generally, we trust these places, right? So putting us ourselves at risk. So, um, they may pretend to be your ordinary supplier, uh, hiding details in, in the fine print when you're, you know, asked to sign a contract for, a product that you're, you want to install into your home. So, so many different ways that, uh, that fraudsters are tricking you. Um, and, but like I said, it varies with each type of fraud. Uh, we're looking at sense of urgency. So if you don't act now, um, they're, they're putting that, that sense of urgency into the victims. So they act quickly and they don't have time to think about what they're doing. I'm actually been experiencing lately, a lot of text messages that are coming in that look like, it is somebody trying to deliver a package to me, which of course now it's so common that we order things online and it's delivered to our homes. Uh, and so, and if we do it often enough, sometimes we might forget that we ordered something and we get a text message that says, we're trying to deliver something to you or I, or Canada Post has a letter for you or, um, there was another one where it, there my charges for online subscriptions hasn't gone through. So there's so many things that look legitimate and it's it can be so difficult to figure out which is which and which ones we can trust. And so I want to talk about uh, the prevention. How can our viewers protect themselves from becoming a victim of these scams? That's a great question. Uh, I think that uh, going back to last year's Fraud Prevention Month, we we covered uh, tricks of the trade, what's in a fraudster's toolbox, and what's in yours, right? And I think that's so important, um, almost impossible to remember every different type of fraud. Um, you know, we can discuss, like, we can go down the list and talk about 30 different types of fraud, but the chances of somebody remembering how they all work and what you should be doing is very challenging, right? But if we focus on on what tools fraudsters are generally use, using across multiple types of fraud, then we're we're, we're equipping ourselves with um, 
with enough information to be able to prevent that from happening, right? So we're looking at spoofing, uh, caller ID spoofing. So, you know, you, you get a phone call claiming to be the CRA. Um, naturally, you know, you go onto your search engine, look up that phone number that's showing up in your call display and say, hey, well, that's CRA's phone number. That doesn't mean that it's a CRA because they have the ability to manipulate that phone number on, on your call display, right? So that that's one important thing to, to be aware of, especially with telephone fraud. Um, like I mentioned, urgency, always like a, a sense of urgency. You have to act now or you're going to get arrested. Uh, if you don't send money now, then your grandchild's going to get arrested. If you don't uh, make the purchase today, um, you know, through an ad you saw on social media, you're going to miss out on this deal uh, of 75% off or something similar, right? Um, emotional manipulation. We see a lot through romance scams where the fraudsters will really manipulate their victims for, you know, months at a time before requesting money. Um, threats. So like I mentioned, uh, if you don't pay right away, then, you know, the police are going to show up and arrest you type thing. Um, pop-ups, uh, you know, whether it's a pop-up asking you to do a survey a pop-up that freezes your computer telling you you have to call a number right away. If you do get a pop-up like that that freezes your device, make sure to shut down your computer, start a backup, and that should take care of that pop-up. Um, search engine optimization is another common one. So, you know, you're having, one example, you're having a problem with your, your printer. You look up the name of that, that manufacturer online, there's a good chance that the first five to 10 results that come up are going to be fraudulent websites. So, um, important to make sure that you're going to the official website for, for that company or manufacturer. Um, so just those are the main things that to keep an eye out for. Um, and, uh, you know, if you keep those in mind, you're, you're going to protect yourself from being a victim. That's a really good advice. And it, it should help our viewers to move forward and be able to protect themselves from becoming a victim. And so I want to talk now about the importance of reporting when you or someone you know falls victim to a fraud, because as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, as alarming as the as these statistics are, the actual reporting rate is really only five to ten percent of the actual fraud that's happening. So those stats, it would appear, are actually much bigger uh, than uh, that we actually know about. So, Jeff, why do you think people are so reluctant to report that they've been a victim? So there, there are a few different reasons. Um, you know, the first reason might be that the victim is is ashamed uh, of what happened. They they may not want to discuss what what occurred. Um, they they may not want to report unless they're they're guaranteed restitution or guaranteed to get their their money back, or they they may have a belief that you know. Well, you know what, the Canadian Anti Fraud Center, they're they're not going to investigate. So what's what's the use of of reporting, right? Um, and that that's part of being able to understand what the the CFC's mandate is. And so, what? How do we change this? Why is it so important that we report these incidents of fraud? So yeah, great question. Um, so first of all, we have to focus on okay, what what does the Canadian Anti Fraud Center do with the information that we we share, right? So what, what is the value in reporting? So first of all, um, information can link a number of crimes together in Canada. So for example, if there's, you know, we get a report of a victim in, let's say Halifax and another one in, in Barrie, um, being the central repository for, for fraud in Canada, we have the ability to link suspect information together and share that information with our, our law, law enforcement partners internationally, right? So Huge value in doing that. Um, information could progress or complete an investigation. Uh, so what you might be sharing might be the missing piece of the puzzle, in other words, right? Um, and most importantly, we, you know, work closely with law enforcement for prevention efforts, government agencies. We we always work together in getting the message out there. So, you know, it, you report something, it could be something new. And, you know, we we send it out through our channels and alert Canadians on what to watch for on a, you know, new phishing text message or whatever the case may be. So if someone is a victim, can you walk us through how to report it and what information they should be able to provide to the investigators? Yeah, for sure. So there, there are two ways to, to report with the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre. Um, you could report by calling our toll-free line at 1-888-495-8501, or you can also report online at um, on our website, antifraudcenter.ca, through our fraud reporting system. 
Now, when you're um, important to note that you don't have to be a victim to, to report, you can be sharing a lot of valuable information on, on the suspect. So, you know, if you've been targeted, but you haven't necessarily sent money, you can still report that. So what we'd be looking for is the, the fraudsters contact information, whether it be phone numbers, email addresses, websites, uh, they may have shared payment information with you to, you know, where to send an e-transfer or maybe a bank account uh, number, all valuable information that, <clears throat> that you can share with the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre and, and so important to report. And so um, where can people go to learn more about what sort of the current trends are, what to watch out for, where can they do that? So local law enforcement uh, throughout the month of March will be sharing a lot of excellent information um, for the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre, uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter or X. Um, so many, you know, posts per week uh, will be following the weekly themes that we discussed. Um, and on top of that, uh, so much good information on our website. Um, you know, March is Fraud Prevention Month. It's the best time to, you know, read a little bit about fraud. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, there's a thought that sometimes that we we think that we won't be a victim. Unfortunately, everybody can be a target of fraud. And if you feel that you have the necessary tools and, you know, gather that information, share it with loved ones or family members that you think may be a little more vulnerable than, than you. I think it's important to remember that because social media is, is so prevalent, I mean, a, a, a huge amount of people use it. And I think we sort of need to be conscious of the information that we put on social media is exactly what these criminals are using against us. Um, do you have any thoughts about what types of things we should think about first before we share some of this information on social media? Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's completely, you know, the, the person's decision if they, what information they want to share. But, you know, if you're, for example, if you're listing your your family members on, on social media, uh, you know, this is my my granddaughter or, you know, my son, my, my niece, then you have to be um, mindful of that information you're sharing and be aware that that information is available. So, you know, uh, fraudsters might collect that information before giving you that phone call uh, for the grandparent scan. So they might know your your grandchild's name or your your niece's name, right? So just being aware that whatever information you share can be used to as a as an extra tool to try to to fraud you. I appreciate that. And so for those who want to learn more, you talked about going to the CA, CAFC website. Can you share that again in any social media links maybe that people could use in order to get more information? Yeah, so our uh, our website is antifraudcenter.ca. This is where you can go for for so much good information. You can go through our fraud index. We have an A to Z list of all different types of fraud, um, and our social media, of course, Facebook, Canadian Anti Fraud Center, and uh, the same thing on on X as well. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for taking the time to be with here. Or I'm sorry, be with us today uh, and sharing your advice with all of our viewers. And I also want to thank you, our viewers, for watching. Until next time, I'm Shannon Jackson. Connect with us by visiting our website or email us at comments at rogerstv.com. I'm Wendell Clark with a word about winning. We all know it takes a team effort in any...